pumped about the topic today. Dynamic tasks have been asked for for so long in the open source Airflow community and Airflow 2.3 uh, released that and so much more. Uh, so kind of take you all through a little bit more about dynamic tasks. Um, Kenton, I will introduce you as our lead developer advocate here at Astronomer. And yeah, take it away. Awesome. Thanks, Raj. Yeah, it's great to be here uh, with everybody. As Raj said, today uh, our Live with Astronomer topic is going to be dynamic task mapping, which uh, is a new feature that was just released in Airflow 2.3 that came out a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we're super excited about it. It really changes kind of what you can do uh, with Airflow and in your DAGs. So as promised for these uh, super short videos, we're going to keep them very code and developer focused. So I'm not going to go through a ton of background on the feature. I will point you at the end to additional resources if you want to go in deeper. Um, but with that, we're going to dive right into a couple of DAGs. And I think the best way to sort of think about dynamic task mapping at a high level is that it allows you to um, dynamically create an arbitrary number of parallel tasks at runtime. Um, so that's different from how DAGs used to work. And I'm going to highlight that by sort of showing a before and after example. Um, so we're going to start with kind of a traditional static DAG here. Uh, kind of your you know, regular ELT type of workflow. So I'm going to grab some files from S3. I'm going to load them into Snowflake, um, do some cleanup, and then I'm going to do my transformation within my Snowflake instance. So simple DAG here. Again, if we're assuming this DAG exists pre-Airflow uh, 2.3, um, I can only, you know, introduce any sort of dynamic aspect to my DAGs at parse time, meaning when Airflow actually reads all of that code. Um, so if we look at the code for this DAG, there's actually nothing dynamic about this one. It's all, it's all static. So I have um, a simple task, to, Python task to get those S3 files. I go through and then I define all of my operators just as I would traditionally. In this case, um, say I have a whole bunch of files on S3 and I don't know how many there are going to be. Um, pre 2.3, I didn't have very many options for dealing with that. Um, so what I do in this DAG is actually just have a single operator that's going to process all of those files at once. So if we go back to my graph view, you can see I just have this single task here for loading files to Snowflake, and that's going to grab everything in my S3 bucket and load it all at once. Um, there are a couple of problems with this method. So obviously this works. Um, you can do it. Sort of the big drawbacks here are that uh, it's potentially really slow and you can't really leverage any parallelism in your computing um, because everything's happening all within a single task. So if you have thousands of files or those files are really big, this task is going to sit here running for quite a long time. And you're sort of beholden to whatever is defined within the operator for kind of how your parallelism works in terms of what it does in processing. This one might not use any parallelism at all. Um, the other big downside to this is that this isn't a very atomic way of defining your tasks. So obviously everything happens within this one task, even though that might be processing, again, hundreds or thousands of files. Um, this makes it really hard to recover from failures. You don't have a way of you know, rerunning it uh, for you know, a single file that failed or a group of files that failed. You're just all stuck in this one task. Um, so again, not, not super convenient. You could try and build in some sort of dynamic aspect to this DAG where you put you know, top level code in your DAG file to um, manage the number of uh, S3 files in that way. Um, lots of people did that before as sort of a workaround for this lack of dynamic tasks, but that comes with other problems as well. It's not very performant um, and you don't maintain any sort of history uh, as to what your last DAG run did if you're creating tasks at parse time. So that's kind of where we were. Um, let's talk about where we are now. So we're going to go to this mapping ELT example. I'm actually going to look at this exact same DAG. So you can see it's the same structure here. You'll notice in the graph view that the only real difference here is that this load files to Snowflake now has these brackets behind it. So that's Airflow's way in the graph view of the UI of indicating to me that this is a mapped task. And we're going to dive right into the code for this example and look at how you can actually implement this. So what dynamic task mapping is going to do is it's going to allow me to pass a list 
um, or dictionary into an operator and create copies of that operator at the time my DAG is run. So it will change in each DAG run. Um, it's actually super easy to implement. So again, the uh, operator that we're changing here is this S3 to Snowflake operator. So this is the one that I say, I actually want a single operator for each file. Um, again, to kind of get those benefits I talked about just a minute ago. Um, but I have no idea how many files there are going to be. Today it might be two, tomorrow it might be 100, and I want my DAG to adjust accordingly. So with that, there are two new uh, functions available to you within dynamic test mapping. Um, the first is called partial. Uh, this is going to be for any uh, parameters that are going to stay the same across all of your mapped tasks. So again, you can think of them as kind of cookie cutter copies that are going to be created in parallel. Um, a lot of the things are not going to change. So um, in the case of this particular operator, like the stage that I use in Snowflake, um, the table I'm loading, my file format, the connection ID, those are all going to stay the same for each one. I don't need to change those. So that's what partial does. And then the next function that actually does the mapping is called expand. Um, and this is going to uh, take in the parameter that I want to map over. So in this case, it's my S3 key that I'm going to create a copy for each one. And what I pass into that, again, needs to be a dictionary or a list. And each uh, one of those uh, entries in the list or dictionary is going to result in a separate copy of the operator. Um, so in this particular case, uh, I'm actually passing in a function, this get S3 files. That's because I've defined uh, my previous uh, task here is going to, that is going to go look in S3 and return me a list of those files. So um, this is where it gets super powerful, where the list, excuse me, that you're mapping over um, can come from a previous task. It could also come from you know, some external system that you grab. Uh, it could be predefined. So maybe it doesn't change that much or it's somewhere else in your code. Um, again, as long as you pass one in, in one of those forms, um, you'll be good to go there. Uh, so this is the easiest way to both within Airflow, I'm defining that dependency between these tasks and I'm passing in the results here. Uh, so from a coding standpoint, um, implementing this as a developer, again, super straightforward. It's really just these two functions. Um, it's also very straightforward to do so, you know, within Python functions. So if you're using decorators instead of more traditional operators like this, you can do that as well. Uh, if I come back here to my DAG and go ahead and run this, um, we should see uh, this update. So, well, this ran in this particular case on this day, there were three uh, files in S3. And this is now actually three different copies of this task. So um, oops, something went wrong with it. Um, but if I were to look at that, you'll see my map index up here shows me I have three instances. Um, all of them failed, so not a great day for uploading to Snowflake, but the great news is I can come in here and I can see what went wrong with each one. So I can come here to um, my first mapped task and I can look at the logs or XCOM specifically for that one. Um, again, it would be the same if you know one of them failed and two of them had succeeded or, or anything like that. So you now have much more granular control over what's happening within all of those mapped instances. Well, so that was kind of our whirlwind tour of dynamic task mapping. A couple of other things that I'll leave you with. Um, not all parameters can be mapped. So most of the base operators are not mappable, um, at least not right now. So um, be careful when you're implementing uh, which parameters you want to map on. Um, uh, the other thing I'll mention is make sure that whatever you uh, send through in your list or dictionary is within or is the format that is needed by the operator for the parameter. So um, in this particular case, I'm turning this into a list of lists because that's what the S3 to Snowflake operator needs for my S3 keys. Um, so keep that in mind. That's a common source of um, sort of issues when developing uh, at first is um, you need to pay attention to what is actually getting passed through. Um, but otherwise, super easy to get started with. Um, 
So again, we'll keep these really short. In the recap, we will be sending out uh, resources for uh, additional um, learning on dynamic test mapping. We have a very detailed guide that walks through all of this, uh, as well as a webinar that we did a couple of weeks ago, where we talk through it in a little more depth and show a different a uh, couple of more use cases. So um, those are available to you if you want to dive in further. But otherwise, we uh, definitely recommend that you get started and playing around with this new feature. We just kind of scratched the surface today, but again, it's super, super powerful in terms of uh, what you can do with it. And yeah, for those who have joined us live, uh, we will take a couple of questions if there are any. There's one question around how it fits into our pricing model, but that's with someone, Ryan, who's already a customer. Uh, so thanks for coming here, Ryan. Um, I think we can, we, we handle that one just fine. Um, let's see here. Any other questions from, from the crowd? Going once, going twice. Oh, let's go, let's see here. Looks like Zach has a question. Zach, if you could just type it in the chat, that'd be perfect. Yeah. So Kenton, does each map task spawn a new task instance for each input in an array or dictionary? Yes, that's correct. So. Uh, what you're starting with is the list or dictionary. If that list has three entries in it, you're going to end up with three parallel tasks. Exactly. Awesome. Thanks yeah. for the question, Zach. <coughs> All righty. Well, if you have any other questions, always feel free to shoot us an email. Um, you'll get some contact information in the follow-up email that comes from this. Yeah. Um, the code will be available, and the video will be sent over to you as well. So you'll have it to look back on. Um, yeah, thank you all so much for joining us. Um, please be sure to catch our next webinars as well as uh, more Airflow Summit talks this week. Um, I know there's a bunch that I want to go to as well. All right, everyone. Thanks so much for your time. We appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. Bye.